to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Flashback Friday. With well over 700 episodes, if you happen to be one of the newer listeners to the show, I know that you probably missed some really good shows. So every once in a while, I like to re-air some of these conversations that I know have been particularly helpful along the way to your colleagues. And if you are a longtime listener, sometimes it's worth pulling the oldies but goodies out off the shelf, right? So today, our Flashback Friday is a replay of the episode with Laurent. Car. Laurence is a Manhattan based designer who started her luxury design business as her third career. In the original episode, number 484, Laurence shared the ingenious method she used to get her firm off the ground and how this and other strategies that she used played a, played a big part in her rapid rise to success. Okay. Now, I can tell you that I don't say that, that sentence lightly rapid rise to success because since 2019 Laurence has been busy she's now the executive producer content writer and host of her Earth X TV original series Shay Laurence she also has been doing regular speaking engagements she contributes to international articles and she consults on sustainability practices to the trade as a sustainability expert, Laurence now serves as as an sustainable <laughs> getting tongue twisted here. Serves as a sustainable furnishings council ambassador, and she carries a certification from Healthy Material Labs Parsons School of Design at the New School. And she is an advocate and a partner for Circular City Week New York. All right. As a keynote speaker on the topic of integrating circular economy principles in the furnishing industry, as well as in health and wellness practices, she is becoming fast recognized as an authority in this area. Okay. Her firm produces these webinars, hosts panels at trade shows and national for national organizations. And she works with brand partners within the industry. On top of all of this, she's managed to manage to do her interior design in the fall of 2021 alone. Just check this out. She was featured in Interior Design Magazine, Architectural Digest, and El Decor. Okay? So, season two of her Earth X TV series about sustainable and circular practices in the furnishings and interior design industry is coming out early in 2022. But for today, we're going to flash it back to Laurence's start, her mindset, and the foundational things that she did to set herself up to achieve the current successes that she's enjoying. I think you're going to like it. Hi, Laurence. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, Luan. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Laurence, you have come out of the gate running with your interior design business here. As we're recording this in the fall, almost the fall of 2019, you are in business. You started April 2018, and uh, it's your business looks much more mature than that when not only I look at the website, but I also have a conversation with you off air about all of the initiatives that you've got going on in your business. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this, Laurence, because so many times a designer will say to me, it's it's been a year, it's been two years, and I really, you know, I cannot get the thing going on and I'm still struggling to have some confidence that there's going to be 
clients in the pipeline. But I've learned that you do a lot of intentional things. It's not happening by accident. So tell me to begin with, it, it sounds like to me that you probably, when you decided to open your design firm, I didn't ask you this before, but my guess is you sat down with some key people and laid out a strategy for your business. Is that is that the case? Because it just seems very well thought out. Oh, thank you. Yes, um, that yes, it's, that's exactly what I did. I I started by designing um, um, uh, the entire business model. Uh, I recruited an advisory board um, made of um, a design and strategy uh, consultant, um, and did laid out my business model and explained this is what I would like to do this is a business model that I'd like that I'm thinking about launching uh, what are your thoughts uh, you know what are the pros what are the cons what should I think about um, so that's how I, I, I started uh, thinking about the business model and then um, and then I uh, I launched uh, uh, the business as you said in 2000 April uh, in April 2018 so what's so funny is I, I suspected that you had done something similar because of the way there are so many well thought out um, components of the of your website and your business. However, I just thought you were going to say, yes, my husband, my sister, my best friend. So you actually <laughs> gathered an advisory board. And was it people and friends like that that you respected or was it design professionals? That's curious that you called it an advisory board. Oh, um no, that's truly a, a, um, a thought process. I, I truly uh, ask um, uh, friends who work well. You know, as you know, I lived in different parts of the world, mm-hmm. and um, so I have friends who are in the finance world, in the business strategy, uh, management, uh, mainly executives, um, and then some creative. And so I, I picked a few different friends: one in the marketing area, another one in the venture capital uh, fundraising area and another one in a really creative um, online uh, brand and um, and I gave it this free um, and just really ask uh, yeah g- g- ask them to be a part of my uh, advisory board from day one for my business and so we meet quarterly uh, we have online meetings and we uh, reassess the business uh, not only the business plan the business strategy what should be thought about and and um, and we we've been continuing doing this since uh, the first day. Wow, <laughs> you know it doesn't like I. You know what's interesting is it on one hand just what we I in our pre air conversation, which didn't include any of that, but I learned so quickly in fifteen minutes what a good business foundation you had. So on one hand, I should not sit here and be surprised. But on the other hand, I am so impressed at the level that you took that to. And I'm thinking, I should have done that with a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it'd be awesome to like check in with these, you know, of. a finance person, a marketing person, a creative. Of course, I've developed my team of experts around me and my dream team around me, but I love the intentionality around this. So, so, okay. So now this is me just like now I, I just have to know for curiosity, is it that, do they own a piece of your business? Do they do this out of the goodness of their heart? Do you take them to dinner? Like this is quarterly. This is an official thing. What, what is the... Is it what is the, the the agreement there for something like that to have an advisory board of people like this? Um, so, um, so usually, I mean, if if they live in the same uh, city as you or same you know um, area as as you, what I heard is that well, for years I've been going to you know um, business. Uh, Women entrepreneur uh, business uh, uh, meetings, or um, uh, I've been part of a, of a few groups. Um, what I learned is that with advisory board, um, they they get paid. You know, they can get paid, or you can, as you said, you know, offer them dinner. <laughs> um, 
um, but but usually you get paid. Yeah. Uh, you know, it could be two hundred fifty dollars a yearly. It can go up to five hundred. Um, this is what I learned in New York City um, Women Entrepreneurial uh, Networks. Um, now, uh, of course, this rate can vary depending on where you live and you know how large the city is in the U.S. or overseas. Um, now, my advisory board are composed of of, of longtime friends, um, you know, successful uh, entrepreneurs or um, career women who have made it to the executive uh, level and have been kind enough to um, to accept that um, to be part of a board. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? I love that. You know what it is? It re- re- reminds me and makes me think of when you have a high-level mastermind like that where you get people that have all reached a certain point in their career and you it just have this great benefit of being able to collaborate with them and check in with them quarterly, monthly, whatever it is. But this is like a, a mastermind where it's all about you. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, we're not here to talk about your business, sweetie. It's all about mine. <laughs> I love um, that. But, I, but, but you know what? Yeah. The thing is, I, I, I'm, I'm now, see, I always want to think about how could somebody listening make this work for them as well? And so maybe it is that you get two or three people that you know, and one meeting, like maybe you do meet quarterly, right? And one week in the the first quarter, it is all about one of your businesses. And then the second week you meet for two hours and it's all about the others. And if that's the give back, right? Because there has to be a come see, come saw, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I was about to say, I mean, some of them are thinking of doing, you know, they're launching their business. So of course, you know, and then it's, it's, you know, I reciprocate. Yes. Uh, yes. That's what we're doing to each other. And, and that's wonderful. I love it. I love it. You know, it's a funny thing because I have, you know, learned many, many years ago the value of gathering with people both inside and outside of your industry in a way that is non-competitive and that is just think tank feeling. Um, you know, we have that with exciting windows now for our window works. You know, we, we meet once a month on the telephone. We meet twice a year in person at different cities uh, around the U.S. And we just came back uh, recently from meeting in Chicago. And it's literally three and a half days from eight o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night. And we just talk about ideas on how to grow our business and help each other with each other uh, thing. And so there's many different ways to access the brain power of other people. But I love that when you launched your business, you looked around at your friends and their superpowers and literally said, would you agree to review what I have as an idea for a, a business plan? Would you tweak it with me? Would you brainstorm it with me? And would you commit to doing that with me four times a year? That's awesome, Laura. I oh. love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's great to hear Window Works is doing that. I mean, yeah. I've I've always um always thought that, you know, this think tank and and you know, uh, you know, really gathering around these are, are very important. I actually do that on a regular basis, you know, and and as you said, you know, actually a lot of my um uh, inspiration and um, sort of my uh, strategy for business models are, are, have been inspired by um, um, businesses outside mm-hmm, the design mm-hmm, industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely know there's value both ways to be in a group, a mastermind, and have an advisory, whatever it is, of both inside and outside, because sometimes it's the outside view because. We get very focused on the way we do things and another industry. You know what I always say? It's like it's like when, you know, when your kids were little and you have to make dinner every single night, right? And yes. don't you find that as human beings, as mothers, as fathers, and my, both of my kids' houses, the, the husbands, my son-in-laws are both the cooks. So this is, goes both ways. But we all tend to have our four or five meals that we make. Every single week, week in and week out, right? We might tweak it a little bit, but you have those four or five meals that you're always like, okay, what are we having tonight? Oh, it's that. And I used to, I remember I used to say to my girlfriends, what are the five meals that you make? Because they're completely different than mine. Can we all just come one day and four of us switch our five meals and then we'll have 20 meals. And so we don't have to make the same darn thing every week. And that's the same way when you get together with people that are successful, but in different industries, because they do something the same way 
and have success with it. But it's a whole like eye opening thing. We're like, wait, I could do that in my industry. Right. And maybe we never thought of it. Right. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I love it. Now I'm even more excited (laughs) because (laughs) I I love anything that's this well thought out and this plan. And so, okay. So you, you have this idea. And the, the reason that I had an, as a suspicion that you did is because in a year and a half's time, you have done a lot of intentional things. So you, in the beginning, I did learn that you, I already learned that you blogged every single week for the beginning. And now you're down to two times a month, but even two times a month when your business is getting busy and the design clients are there, and I happen to know you have three teenagers, you know, that's a big commitment two times a month. Okay. And then you have e-design and you have a newsletter, you have a social media platform. You've also already working with uh, PR agents. So these are all things that tell me that this is not happening by accident, that I'm sitting down and I'm strategically planning how I am letting the world know that I have put up a shingle and I am an interior designer. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> that is right. Yes, yes, yes. So I, 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 decided, I decided from day one to have um, this business model with um, direct design work for high-end residential and, and you know, hospitality project. Um, so this is more like the full service or, you know, consultation um, projects. Um, and then the other aspect of the business was to, uh, from day one, uh, build uh, an online presence. Um, because to me, in the 21st century, it is unthinkable not to use, um, you know, the technology and, and, and how we live. This is how the, the environment is, the business environment is um, is um, is current um, and, and it will only uh, become more uh, developed that way. Um, so um, I decided to have um, within my website a blog. Um, and a newsletter, and then developed uh, develop these affiliated marketing, um, you know, which are, in fact, the whole uh, thought process of that business model is how to build a business that will um, uh, have different revenue streams. That is just, in fact, the first question, um, and that's how I designed uh, it. Okay. So this is what you started with when you started to think about your business for yourself. And then of course you invited this advisory board to help you. It's how to build a business that has multiple revenue streams. That was the premise right there. Yes. I love it. Okay. So what I love is that we're building the business model first and then we're figuring out through conversation and through advice, what is going to work specifically for your business and how are you going to position it? And then how are you going to build it out? So you decide that, you know, what, first of all, what's very near and dear to you is this niche of wellness design and sustainability. That's important to you as a human being, right? Laurence? That's right. That's right. That's okay. absolutely important for me um, and for the future of our planet, you know, um, which, you know, of course, include the people and how we make products, you know. Um, yes, it's the triple bottom line. Definitely. Right. And so the thing is that the lesson in there is there. I'm sure there was at some point where you said, if I'm going to be an interior designer, what is the what is the avenue? What is the aspect of design that really is passionate and speaks to me? So it wasn't like, hey, my advisor said that this is the next hot thing for the planet. Let me lean into it, right? Like you have to own that, right? Yes, absolutely. And 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 in that, I, I wanted to attra- address what I. What I uh, say is, you know, the two crises I think we, we need to really think through um, right now is one is about, you know, how people are stressed, uh, you know, the level of anxiety and how it affects our everyday life. And so that to me uh, was an aspect in well-being, which I think is really important to address and, and as not, not enough out there is how to create well-being. Uh, food design, um, and specifically because you know we tend to think too much on the product and the aesthetic and and you know how does it look good. Well, how about how does it feel good? That's the number one. And then the other component, which um, is also as important, and as, as we just mentioned, you know, um, for um, our, the present, the present actually, and the future of our planet, is the sustainability, uh, sustainable a- a- aspect. You know, how can we make the right choice um, um, for our interiors and uh, actually outdoors as well um, right. Right. when we design? 
And and the thing about it is is the 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 message here is to really get very clear with yourself as to what does light your fire up, what does make you feel passionate about your profession because if you're intentional the way you are and you know that you're going to launch with a blog four times a month and you're going to have a newsletter, you know, this is a lot of content that has to be created. So you can't say, well, this is a hot topic. Let me talk about this. It has to be something that drives you to really sit down and do this content creation so that you then are creating this platform, this online platform that goes back to your original goal, which is how to build a business with multiple revenue streams. So for another designer, it might be children's decor. For another designer, it might be whatever. But for you, it's this. And that's the connection. And that's where, you know, like I said, it's just driving this much content in order to say, yes, this is the uh, the online platform I want to create. Now, I understand that in this short 18 months or so that you have built your email list to nearly or just over 3,000 people at this point. That's no small feat. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so tell us about that. So you are putting the content on the blog. I did notice on your website that you have a four page mini mag and I suspect that that's from Leslie and Sam at Saver Partnership. Did that you work with them? Uh, so on a panel um, and that's where we connected um, since then I've just followed her, her even more so through uh, a content online and uh, joined her Facebook group yeah. and um, and then we decided to work together and create this e-boutique uh, magazine I, I found enormous value on the, on creating that it's 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 again it all has to do with um, online, uh, s- uh, supporting my brand, my voice, what is my message to my customers um, and to my followers? Uh, what do I have to say and how can this uh, e-book magazine, uh, actually it's more, as she calls it, an email opt-in, uh, can support my um, my message? Right. Now, tell me about going, yes, and first of all, I just, you know, we know that L- Leslie and Sam also created the e-magazine for window works as well and so i'm firsthand 100 percent endorse the process of going through that with them um tell me about you know you launch a website april 2018 you start to create the content how do you attract the 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 people to sign up to your list before you had this e-magazine because it sounds like that that came later or was it slow slow moving and this has been the lead generator or was it did you post to pinterest and back to your blog like people are going to want to know how you actually grew that email list laurence Yes, of course. Um, so um, I, I worked for a firm before. I worked for Mac2, a firm that is based in New York City, um, and it's, it's called Mac2, M-A-C-2, and um, uh, led by um, the great legendary uh, Mika Ertigen, who uh, founded her firm um, in the 60s um, with a uh, late partner, Chasey Reiner, mm. um, and she's been running that firm um, ever since. And so it's a high-end uh, luxury uh, residential and uh, hospitality firm, but particularly focused more on uh, residential in the late years, um, in the recent years. So I worked with uh, Mac2, and that's where I build my network, uh, I would say my essential network with showrooms and um, brands and, uh, you know, well, you know, clients uh, from Mac2. So I definitely brought that network with me um, and um, started my, my, my newsletter um, email list uh, with, the, with, with that uh, network okay. that I had accumulated. Uh, the other um, thing I would say is that I went to Parsons um, because this is um, like, let's say, my, my third career. And uh, when I went to Parsons to um, study, um, I also built a network within there, I would say, between the faculty members and, and all the different people that I met um, who came from different careers. Um, so I brought that in as well. Okay. So basically what you're saying is 
I just started with my own network of family, friends, acquaintances, career colleagues, and invited them to read my blog. And possibly, I guess what happens is little by little, they start to share it with other people, start to tell other people, and they start to, it starts to grow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, but, I, <laughs> I, but I would say it's mainly, it's mainly uh, professional. I mean, I wouldn't say so much family and friends. I would definitely say, um, okay. you know, it's, it's uh, uh, career relent, uh, related. Career related. Okay. Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. Terrific. Okay. So you run the design firm and you are doing luxury full service design. Okay. Um, I understand that your business model for that is that you are a sole owner of your firm and you will access career uh, design professionals, colleagues on an as needed project basis. So rather than have a full team on staff all the time, you hire out design professionals based on the projects in your pipeline. Tell us a little bit about why you do that and how you, where and how you know that you have a good list of go-to designers that you can call on when you do maybe get two or three big projects at the same time or whatever creates the need for having help for yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, um, again, it's all about the business model that um, I want to, to, to run. Um, so focusing on the design work, I um, particularly uh, think because I'm running this kind of a double business, you know, one design work traditional and then the other online, um, I have to, 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 to make some decisions uh, whether am I going to go full time and grow a team that is going to be on the design work and how much time do I have uh, versus, you know, uh, allocating some time on the what I call my online business. Um, so where I'm at and with a number of projects where I, that I can handle uh, that makes sense to align with my um, uh, you know, hi high expectation and um, the way I want to deliver a project. Um, so right now, I feel that the best avenue is to hire uh, fr um, designers, freelance designers who uh, embark on the project per project. Um, so I'm on full time with my firm. I have a full time assistant who works with me and and then we hire um, per project uh, freelance designers. Okay. Did well, I answer I, your question? <laughs> yes. Well, it, you did. And I just want to say that I love that you start with, I think about what is the business model I want to have. And you ask, do I want to, you know, work full time myself and grow a full team? And when you come to the answer, you're like, that's not what I prefer to do. So you work full time, you have a full time assistant, but it's, it's a conscious decision that you're making. See, that's the little nudge in there for me. It's not like, oh, I don't have more people on my team because I didn't get around to it. I don't have more people on my team because I'm too busy to hire them or I didn't think about it. You consciously are deciding that's not the business model that I want. And so therefore, the, between the two of you, when you need extra help, you go out and you hire freelance designers for it. Am I understanding it correctly? Yeah, that's yeah. that's where we are now after a year, uh, you know, a year and a few months. That's where we are right now. Um, you know, then I think at some point, you know, well, um, with the work coming <laughs> our way, well, probably will grow that that side of a business um, definitely but um, you know this is where we are after um, you know over a year of business and mm -hmm. um, that's the business model right now okay and when you are looking for these freelance designers Mm -hmm. Where do do they do? You're in New York City. Do they sometimes work remotely for you? Do you access um, remote freelance designers, or do you strictly work with designers that are in New York City and can come to your office and work with you and collaborate for the length of a project? Or how does that work? 
Oh, no, I, I, I uh, specifically work with designers who are in New York City and can come to our office. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is uh, uh, specifically uh, uh, very important for the uh, design concept part of a project. Uh, you know, the design research and how we will, um, we will work on the concept together. We need to see, we need to touch, we need to feel <laughs> these different parts of the project. Um, you know, the, the design board, the whole research. Um, so at some point, we need to 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 meet uh, can they work remotely once we work on CAD once we work on Adobe different uh, you know platforms for the the, the um, design concept that is online yes for sure mm-hmm. but we need to meet uh, so um, it's a requirement that I can they can actually locate it near New York City or in New York City okay and Advice for working with freelancers as a business model. Do you do you personally have your design process, the way you take a client through your process, very clear and enunciated so that when someone comes to work for you on a per project basis, they work in your system? Or are you more loosey-goosey about it and you just kind of do it as you go? How does that happen? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> it was a trick question. <laughs> I'm all about systems. I love your podcast for that. I just love your content. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, there's some people I'm talking to. I already know the answer, even if I didn't ask it off air. <laughs> It's it's all about systems. I mean, what is a business without systems? (laughs) Right. It's a you. That's what I always say. You don't have a business. You have a you. (laughs) Um, So, no, no, very rigorous. Um, No. And um, and, and, and we we have meetings. We have weekly meetings. I have weekly meetings with all my teams, all my um, all my uh, the, the, all the people who work with me, whether it's the online team, whether it's the more traditional, you know, design team, it's um, it's weekly meetings, it's um, you know, uh, numerous ver- verification steps, you know, for different um, projects. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Right, because the the thing is, I would think that it's even more important to have your process very clear and defined for yourself or you and your assistant for when you do have those freelancers come in because you know, it's your name on the door and it's your client and it's your referral that's in the hands of the work product that they're doing. And if they run amok and they do it the way they do it, or they do it the way the last firm they worked at, does it that's not the same as the way you run a project and uh, that's very important because there's a lot of like we we recently had a conversation with Nicole Heimer on the podcast the uh, founder of uh, Curio Electro and she's a brand expert right and Mm -hmm. so the thing is you know she was teaching us how our brand, her, her words are, our brand is found in the nooks and crannies. The brand, the brand of your business is found in every way you touch a client. And so the simple truth is it's very important when you do hire freelancers, if they have work product that is going to be seen by a client, if they are even part of meetings that maybe clients are, are part of, or if they are representing you for um, measures and site visits, that they do it the way you do it because that is all sending a message. Do you agree with that, Laurence? Oh, I, I agree 100%. Um, actually, um, part of defining my business in the very beginning, I, I worked uh, very deeply into the brand. Um, I really, really spent a lot of time on that. It was key to the message. It's where you start, is that who you are, how do you pass your message to your client, who new niches, who are you targeting? I mean, there's like so many con- components as well as what are all the touch points um, that are going to be uh, you know with your clients and how do you define each of them I actually worked with that with uh, July Molloy in the very beginning okay. uh, we did a brand uh, design I totally agree um, Luan this is just uh, so important and and um, I, it's a work in process. I constantly have to do it uh, and verify every touch point um, uh, with clients, you know, from online 
to um, you know person to person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, it's and that's exactly what she says. It's it's all the touch points. Those exact words is what she said. All the touch points, and I love that. Yeah, you're you know you were only halfway through, and you're already getting a hashtag smart lady. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> 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 so, all right. So now take me a little bit further through. I, I'm sure there are two types of designers listening. One designer that is thinking about hmm, this accessing of the freelance talent in our industry. And the other designer that's thinking, how do I get to be that freelance talent? So you, where do you find your network? And I'm sure at this point you probably have a little roster of people that have worked with you before and not necessarily that everybody listening should send you an email and want to work for you. But the point is, how to tell us if someone is listening and thinking I'd love to get more experience or I'd like to just not have the responsibility of running a firm but I'd love to be able to be this valuable freelance person for a firm like yours what are the traits that you look for when you are first encountering them what are you looking for in a resume what are you looking for in uh, personality tell us a little bit about that process Oh, yes. Um, so the first thing I would say is that where do I find them? You know, I I use my resources. Um, so I went to Parsons, um, you know, through Parsons, I found um, I found a whole roster of uh, designers who, uh, you know, just uh, are looking for work. Um, and, um, you know, and I tend to look for those who had had the previous experience within in, in the industry or um, and then needed to go back to, for a degree or um, came from outside the industry and are using their um, um, their career experiences uh, to um, contribute to the design industry. Mm. Um, I also, uh, you know, um, I'm a member of the IIDA. I'm a member of ASID. Um, you know, I'm about to become a well up. I mean, look, all the people I meet, you know, then I, I, I always meet uh, designers who it's it's an industry where a lot of uh, people, you know, change jobs. Mm. There's a lot of, of movement within that. So, um, you know, connection is very important. And I can, and I can, you know, and I meet these people and, and they're always, you know, um, it's always great. So that's how I collect, you know, uh, sometimes it's organic and sometimes it's just really intentional and, and filling out a form um, um, with, within an industry that provides that, ser- that service, that access. Um, now, what are the traits that I look for, uh, you know, in certain maturity? Uh, definitely uh, flexibility um, in the way these designers uh, work, how organized they are. Uh, Do I feel that they are organized enough and um, have a mindset that, uh, you know, uh, reflects flexibility enough to to organize themselves, to provide um, the work that I would ask them on the time, um, uh, you know, on time? Mm. Um, you know, will they be able to, how much experience do they have? I mean, definitely, you know, I'll be looking for, um, you know, whatever the tech uh, skills, Um, you know, CAD, um, Adobe, you know, InDesign, uh, Illustrator, uh, how can they use those and so on, you know. um, Mm -hmm. So that's definitely some of the skills that I would be looking for. And also, who do they work for? Who did they work for uh, or with? And, um, and, you know, what are their um, knowledge of brands and, um, you know, in lighting, and, oh, well, you know, from lighting to, to texture to fabrics to uh, accessories, like, the whole the whole nine yards okay and how do you, what do you do when you are first interviewing and maybe coming across somebody that might maybe you did meet at an ASID meeting or an IDS meeting or something like that do you have some sort of process in the interviewing where you ask them to perform a couple of tasks and see if they can get it done timely do you what sort of question how do you how do you how do you actually vet them before they're in the middle of a project with you and you think oh you're not that organized like how do you know ahead of time <laughs> oh I, I do it I always ask them uh, well I, so I have a very um, specific uh, interview process but I also ask uh, them to um, 
produce a project, okay. like uh, meaning like an example of a project, you know, um, for a client. And, and we come up, depending on the experience, you know, in the residential field or hospitality field or uh, commercial field. Uh, some do a lot of commercial, you know, um, and then just really ask them to produce a project. And some, you know, do it on the evening of the same day. Um, and then some do it like three, four, five days or <laughs> even a week after. Um, so that tells me the motivation that tells me the, um, the ability to deliver something fast. And, and of course, within that presentation that is sent to me an email, I can see the skills, um, mm. and understand, uh, you know, it's, it's all about how you present yourself. So even that talks about it, the level of font, the size of the font, you know, the color, uh, the scheme, the mood board, um, what has been thought through, the CAD skills, the uh, in design, illustrator suites, how did they put it together? I, I can just see it. Um, wow, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. So you really are getting, in all of that, you're not only getting um, an an idea of their technical skill using those different platforms. You're getting an idea of their aesthetic skill as far as the design, but you're also getting an idea of their work product pride, right? How do they present it to you? Like you said, the font, the colors and everything in just making the product available to you, you know, do they really, it, cause it is, it is so telling, right? So you're an interior designer and it's, it's not just the room that you design. It's the way you walk in and explain the room that you design. It's all the details. And so you're saying that you're not just looking at the details of the board that they design, but every detail connected from creating it to presenting it to showing it, yada, yada. That's right. I That's love right. it. I love it. Okay, good. All right. So now let's talk about your e-design platform because you said from the beginning, your business model, your number one goal was to have multiple rev revenue streams and to support mm -hmm. the e-design platform, you knew that you needed to create an email list, which you did intentionally by such an amazing um, amount of blogging and creating a newsletter. And, but you also have an e-boutique on your website. And mm -hmm. I know that we had a conversation with Leslie and I'll put the episode number in the show notes where she mentioned platforms like Pepper Jam and Viglink. And that is what you're utilizing too. this sort of um, and everybody hates when we use the word curate anymore, but the idea is sometimes the word is just the right word, right? Yes, so you're, yes. you're curating products out in the greater world and putting them on your website. And when somebody clicks to buy, they're not buying a cart from your website. It's taking them back to the individual platform that they come from and you're getting an affiliate uh, payment from that, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Yes. So, so the point is that we don't have to create a card on our own website, but, but we do, I notice that, and I'm not at all surprised, um, but I notice that everything in your e-boutique does echo all of the principles that are important to you as a designer. So it seems like that to your point of sustainability and organic and wellness. So tell us a little bit about that whole platform and your philosophy on it and how you execute it. Okay. Um, so you're specifically asking the thought process in terms of the aesthetic choice or yes, more like another... of the, the, the system of how I use a big link versus a pepper jam? I think actually I would love to know a little bit of both. So let's start with, uh, what do you think starts first? The physical, how to set it? Let's do that. Do that first. So we yes. have pepper yes. jam and big link. You, you set up an account with these places, right? Yes, that's right. Yes. So you set up an, an account um as as uh, with your company uh credentials and um and so you, you know you have to uh, um, uh, give office admin uh, information and then then i contact my web designer um and give her of course all this login um and then we will explain specifically which brand i will work with um so um once i have selected these brands that i work with then I will select specific products that will align with the messaging of my brand um, that are preferably um, holistic um, and as well as, you know, have some uh, sustainable approach or um, eco-friendly safe process, the way they make products um, or have that messaging about uh, well-being. 
and then um, then I make this selection and um, specifically I make this selection um, with that will align with the season uh, for instance, uh, now we are in fall, so these selections have been made um, sometime in, uh, in August. Um, but then when we will uh, reach October, we will just really focus more on the holiday season. Um, but uh, again, stay aligned with um, the uh, co- company message. So do you just simply add more product as the seasons roll by or do you remove product and put new product up so as 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 you just said like the fall and then into the holidays so will things that were on in june and july and august come off or does the list just get longer no, um, some of that makes sense within the season um, and have been extremely popular will remain. And, uh, you know, some are, uh, can can stay all year long. Um, but but then there will be more of a target of a season um, for um, the holiday season, for instance. That's so you're a- monitoring us. the things that are performing well and people are buying and things that are either completely seasonal and should come off or just are not good sellers. You just say, OK, that can come off and make room for something else. Yes, that's correct. OK, yes. OK. And then. What what are we talking about time, Laurent? So, for instance, if you're going to get ready to make your selections for the holiday season, is this getting down a rabbit hole and spending four hours on websites finding products, or is it you? Is it a process that I put aside an hour and I get it done? How 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 time consuming is it? Uh, um, I put aside an hour, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, it could be an hour and a half, two hours, if it's really a very specific uh, area that I will be looking for. And then I I did new vendors. So I really will take the time to uh, understand what does this new vendor offers. But it it pretty much come easily. And um, yeah, I would say that's what it is. Has it gone? One hour or two hours per month, monthly. Monthly, this this e-boutique is is reviewed. Yes, definitely. Okay, monthly it's reviewed. And has it gotten easier for you as the months go by and you understand not only the process, but getting a little bit more critical and clear on the products that you select? Yes, absolutely. Right? I would think there's a curve there that gets better. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so the thing about this is, is that you at this point are spending, say, two hours a month doing it. You Mm -hmm. have your webmaster who has to do her part in it where she uploads the pictures and the the products and the links and everything. Yes. Um, is there anything more that's happening from a time standpoint? Is, maybe, let, are we going to attribute two hours of her time or is it more like five or eight hours of her time to to put the new product on each month? What are we looking at there? Any no, idea? I would say, I would say for her, yeah, maximum two hours, not even, okay. I would say, okay. you know, so used to doing this. Uh, well, I, I guess, yes, maybe two hours because of a layout, um, Right, uh, right, right, right. The, the, you know, the site in, is in set up. Right. And, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the template and the um, framework is there, and she's just changing and adding. So we're yeah. and and you sh- share with me off air that a, a year or so into this, that you are earning anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars a month from the affiliate marketing at this point. And I also, you also shared that you know, hey, <laughs> day one it wasn't that right. Um, yes. But at this point, we're talking about trading four hours hours of time for 500 to a thousand dollars and I would imagine another year from now even if it was a thousand to two thousand it's the same four hours and so this goes back to your original meeting with yourself and your advisory board and saying I want to look at something that creates a revenue stream that I don't necessarily have to be present for 40 hours a week like I do a luxury project, but I can bring money in on the side. That goal of having multiple revenue streams. Yes, yeah, yes, and yeah. that, is, that is one of them. And and I would say that, you know, as Leslie uh, explained, you know, on your show, you know, Save a Partnership, it's, um, it's, it's a long-term project, mm-hmm. you know, and it all has to do with uh, also your number of followers, your number of website visitors, you know, um, same with your blog. You know, how do you grow your list and how do you grow your followers, you know, on your groups, on social media, Facebook, uh, you know, your Instagram followers and, and uh, 
um, soon, you know, once you reach a certain threshold um, on Instagram, you can actually put them there as well. You can also put your affiliated links on Pinterest. So it's just, you know, how how much can you put that visibility? I should also add that um, these affiliated, some of these affiliated blog are um, always on my um on my blog as well as my newsletter, and they are not the same as um, the ones on the e-boutique. So um, it's it's just like it's it's a it's a constant uh, you know uh, project, and it's a fun project. I mean, for me, picking you know these items whether they're online or um, you know it would be in person in a showroom is a fun process. You know, mm. you have to love doing that, and it has to come easy to you. I would say, you know, I mean, uh, that definitely helps. Um, right. So you enjoy it, like you love to shop to begin with you love to find and and and, and find that select select those beautiful things that you know okay okay i love that i love that that's another aspect of it and what i didn't ask so we didn't take into account is we have your two hours a month we have your web designers webmasters two hours a month but who is doing we also know that you are creating the two blogs a month and the newsletter okay the content for that so that's a couple of hours i'm sure each week or month whatever but who's doing all that that back end connecting and pinning into the blog and all of that is that your webmaster that she's doing that for you as well or do you have a different consultant that does that no I have a different consultant but I should say that I have a very uh, big input in that sure. because I actually uh, really truly love doing that I have a passion for this um, um, my uh, assistant has also a very good uh, skills um, for these so she, her, she has an input definitely on Pinterest and Instagram and um, you know is really uh, successful skills in there so we always there's a, there's a whole editorial program um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's part of the question but that is because actually it all goes together it's all part of the marketing aspect of the company uh, and it is you know the online the online uh, voice and direction so the blog the newsletter and the social media are part of it and um, so we plan in advance what will will be the editorial you know a content of the blog of the newsletter and the social media you know what are we going to talk about what and when and again that then refers to um, my schedule where are, will I be in October where will I be in January you know in October I'll be in High Point in January I'll be in Paris you know and then you know later Later on in April, I'll be in, in Milan. So, you know, how do we plan around these events and, and how do we, do we uh, you know, um, plan the content around, around these, you know, um, not only trade shows, but then the projects that are coming between and, you know, and, and all of that has to align with the messaging and the brand and, and where does the business go? Um, I love that. So what you're saying is, is that when you sit down at a particular meeting, say in June, you will look and your, you and your marketing team and your social media team and your assistant will look and say, okay, Laurence is going to be in high point in October. She's going to be in Milan in January. So blog content around this, we could say getting ready to go to high point, or we can take the approach of what I learned in high point and la, 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 la. So we're actually literally planning it out many, many weeks and months in advance. And of course, you know, maybe the week after high point, it's what I found in high point. Then it's the, the getting ready for the holidays, all the typical things that we all do, but it's your, you are taking a complete helicopter 360 view of your business as a year long thing. And all the components are coming into it from the blog to the newsletter to the Pinterest to the IG strategy to everything. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot. It's a lot. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But I think it's, 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 it goes back to the system, you know, yes. the system. It, you have to know where you go. You have yes. to be strategic. Without strategic thinking, where do you go? Yes. And how can you design? We always took, we designer, we talk about designing rooms, designing environments, you know, you know, uh, spaces. Um, but we have to know how to design a strategy as well. You know, it's, 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 if, if you make a parallel, it's like you, you, you design, you design your business and you design, you know, where you'd like to go and, and just schedule it 
you know, um, put system in places and make it happen. I love it. You know, I just recently had um, such a nice little quick afternoon at uh, Columbia Chicago, Columbia College in Chicago, and I spoke to a, a classroom of interior design students, and um, their um, professor is Renee King, and Liz is one of my podcast listeners who set this up for me, and uh, it was so fun, and I literally just said to them, listen, you design the rooms that you're working on, right? Design the career you want to have. That's so funny because I literally <laughs> said that two days ago. And I said, sit here and think about it. Do you want to come out and work for an AD100 firm? Do you want to have your own firm? Do you want to, you know, do you want to work in a suburb of some part of America and just be part of a team that is in, that that designer is important to that community of 40 or 50,000 people or 20,000? You know, there's all different ladders and all different ways to look at a design career. I said, but think about it now while you're in school. Design that the way you're going to design the room that you're going to work, work on tomorrow. So that's so awesome. We totally share that <laughs> philosophy. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, yes. Yes. I mean, what it is is when I speak with people like yourself, Laurence, that are very smart and very strategic, it, it's, it never surprises me that every little nuance of your business that I ask you a question about, you are consistently going back to, well, we planned it that way. Well, that's part of the strategy. <laughs> well, what do you mean, Luann? How do I not know what to do with that? Because in August, I was thinking about it. So um, it takes a lot of work to do that, though. It really does take a lot of work. And of course, we heard at the beginning of the show how you put the brakes on four times a year to do exactly this, to re, like you said, to reassess the goals that you set, reassess the, if you've met them, if you are on track, if you need to revise them, if you need to make pivots. Pivots, right? These are all things yes. that you do every four months, right? Yes, yes, yes. Every four months. I mean, you know, we go from Q1 to Q4, mm -hmm. um, you know, but and on all aspects of a business, uh, you know, um, yes, how to run the business, you know, where do the task go for each team? I mean, I have a system. I have a weekly system, you know, of, um, you know, how at the beginning of a week, you know, we refer to the quarterly objectives, you know, how, how, you know, we have a meeting on Monday morning morning, you know, this is where we go. We review that list, that task list. We go over, you know, with each team, um, you know, the online team in the afternoon, uh, the uh, local, more traditional team, you know, the morning. And then by the end of the week, you know, we review that list. Uh, you know, we have an end of a week meeting, but we also, you know, start to think about what needs to happen next week, you know. And so therefore, when you take it over the next week, we're ready for, you know, we've already thought through of some aspects that need to follow up, what else needs to be, what have you other objectives and, and so on. I mean, that's, that system is, is put in place. But as you said, yes, it is a lot of work in the sense of you have to constantly think and keep that overview of 360 degrees, you know, where is the business going? What do I want to achieve? And, and um, what are we achieving and mm. where are we at? And where do we need to pivot? You know, mm -hmm. that sometimes yes. we are going to reach, we, we're actually at, at, a, at a certain time right now. You know, it's, it's, um, I think we're reaching that point. Well, I'm going to High Point. This is going to be my first time at High Point. Really? Um, you know, as a design tool blogger, which I'm really, oh, really very fun. happy. Oh, <laughs> Oh, congratulations. Good for you. Good oh, for you. thank you. Yes. Um, Yes, yeah. but that's that's. Um, but I want to go back onto when your question about the social media. Um, you know, we're working with uh, Andrew Joseph, and yes. and and we're going to work with um, with his team, his social media team, uh, Rich. You know, Andrew Andrew Joseph Rich. So um, that's going to be a, definitely a plus as well. Yes, Andrew Joseph PR here in New York City. He was on the show. I'll put the um, episode in the show notes for sure. A tremendous. Uh, asset to our industry and a great friend to me. I just adore this man. He is something else. And we were all together a couple of weeks ago at Future Home, the, all yes, of us, right? Yes, yes. What about, what a great conference. I mean, it's like, talk about, you know, um, this is what I love is actually, uh, you know, uh, the, um, 
the importance of you know creating creating this think tank you know and this re, this big re, time of of reflection uh, of bringing uh, people from outside the industry you know and these entrepreneurs these business executives and 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 let them share and and share with us you know designers or or you know uh, within um, uh, the design industry um, what is happening what yes. is happening right now but also how do they work how do they think you know um and and take some uh, there's a lot of key takeaways to take from that you know <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, i love this type of conference it's, well it's I, oh, the truth because it just it cements what you have done with your business which is to think about it before you launch it and to create it and design it to your liking, to your lifestyle, to your visions and to your goals. And you gathered people inside and outside of the industry to help and advise you. And as you go through your career, each of us, we need to continue to do these things, to go to conferences, to go to coaching events, to do the things that get us out of our own brain. Because so often it's one sentence from somebody and you just say to yourself, Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, like, like you just open the door and now I get it. If you are in your own world, in your own studio with the same people who may be rock stars and I'm sure are, but you do need to just put your head up and look around and engage with other professionals uh, inside and outside the industry to make your brain think and to realize what's possible. Yes, yes, absolutely. And yes. engage Thanks. with the world and, and, and see what else is possible. And I just have to say, I am so insanely impressed with you, Laurence, and I can't Thank you enough for sharing, <laughs> you know, your journey with us and, and just really, this is the testament, you see, because first of all, look, that you've come to this, as you said, it's your, your third career, right? Not your first. Okay. So yes. you bring that body of experience. And I did, you know, I just wanted to say too, I, I saw on your website, the video, and I love that you said leading a design project is like choreographing a dance because that is one of your careers that you were a professional dancer and you taught dancing and, and, yes. and all of that. Right. So I think that's awesome. But that is the, that is the thing. So there are two types of designers out there. One, one that just is uh, coming out of school, first career, and another that is a second or a third career. But the reality is, is that both of them, if they want to be really achieving a level of success in 18 months or two years, the, 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 it's all available to you, whether you're 25 or you're 45. It, it, you just have to do it. You can't say, there's no work. I don't know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. You sit yes. down and you plan for it. And that is the huge message of your podcast here today, Lawrence. And I just love it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all righty. Well, thank you so much for sharing it with us today. I appreciate it so much. You have a great day, okay? Thank you so much, uh, uh, Luan, and thank you for all the podcasts and the work you do. It is always so inspiring and so educational. So, do you see why I wanted to re-air this particular episode? With the new year upon us, I think it's helpful to hear how someone has successfully created a business strategy and kept it at the center of their ongoing decision making. If after hearing this, you realize you need to revisit or create a strategy for your business, Laurence's method is very smart and very doable. She reached out to her network and handpicked people she knew well that also had reached a certain level of success in their own particular careers. She chose a marketing professional, a venture capitalist, and a creative who had built an online brand. She meets with them online on a quarterly basis to swap ideas and advice. Does this sound like something that could benefit your business, having a group of smart people to run ideas by, to hold you accountable, and help you see your blind spots, right? I think any business, most businesses, all businesses could use this kind of advisory panel. It's so easy to get lost when we're running our businesses. Intense projects and demanding deadlines can pull us away from a central strategy that grounds us. We want to try everything that has worked for others, right? It's our nature. 
right? But how beneficial would it be to know that there is a group of people in your court to run your ideas by and to help you work through if there is a new tactic, okay? And I just I just love that. I know I have that in my world. I really want you to grab that for your world, okay? I also think that when we have the accountability of quarterly meetings, we know we have to come to these meetings with results. So we're more careful about our daily choices and we're more deliberate in what we say yes and no to because not that someone's watching us day to day, but you're going to come to that meeting and you're going to ask these people for their time to help you in your business. You can't say, well, I didn't do my part in the last three months since we've met, right? So I also love that she doesn't stop at the quarterly meetings with her advisory board. You know, I'm a big, big proponent of the weekly meetings, okay, with her immediate team. Every Monday, they review the task list. And at the end of the week, they check in again. Did we hit our goals? What needs to happen next week? Okay, these frequent check-ins are vital to a successful business. We don't love adding meetings to our calendars. I get it. But when they're well-run meetings, then it's time well spent. Okay, so having a specific agenda can help you make the meeting more efficient. What also streamlines your meetings is keeping the overall strategy for that particular meeting in mind. So is it a meeting to review projects? Is it a meeting to review marketing? Is it a meeting to review whatever? Okay, so I have to say it comes down to intentionality. Are the actions we take on a daily basis moving us and our business forward? Is there an overarching strategy from which all of our business activities are working together and going towards that focus, right? Or are we constantly scrambling, pulled this way, pulled that way without any, you know, roadmap, right? If that's where you are without a strong strategy, without a why, what's the first step? Well, Laurence's advice is to start with getting clear on what naturally drives you. What do you love? What do you want to do more of? What makes you different? She says, start there and then craft a rough plan for your business. Now, you might be in business 15 years and it might be time to redo this, to sit down with these questions, right? And then take that plan and run it by some smart people you know. Create your own advisory board and ask them if they will help you hone in and really work on the successful practices that you need to engage in and you need to be accountable for in order to up-level your business, okay? So where do you find this advisory panel? Laurence is a great networker. She stays in contact with people from Parsons, ASID, previous clients, and co-workers. Can you think of people in any of those avenues of your world that you might invite to be on your advisory panel? Okay. And then, of course, she says, think about what can you offer these people in return? Are you particularly good at one aspect of your business? Are you great at sales? Are you great at nurturing your social media? Maybe you're great at hiring, or maybe you're good at having the difficult conversations with clients and staff. So thinking what your superpower is and how you can offer that back in return is the great first step. Okay. So I also want to say thank you to Kravit. Kravit has been a pillar of our podcast from the very beginning, okay? And they've been a pillar of our business at Window Works from the very beginning, okay? And I want to say thank you to Kravit for believing in this podcast and in our community that we've built here and for helping the show become a reality. Explore the entire li- library of guaranteed in-stock fabrics at Kravit.com and you can get 10% off any one Kravit fabric, wallpaper, or trim purchase by using the code AWDB10. Okay? So I want to close by asking you to share with me how you have been implementing your business strategy, the goals that you have set for yourself. How have you started to work towards them? All right? Come on over to Luann Nygar and Friends Facebook group. All right? An idea that you share there may inspire and help someone else. And maybe you'll pick up a good idea while you're there too. All right? Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate so much that you show up. Decide to be excellent.
Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.